Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Creativity, Montessori, and the Meaning of Life. Today I would like to start with some words from a book called Awaken by Phyllis Shearer. Mark 6, 31. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest for a while. Rest is becoming a lost art in our modern culture. We've exchanged its old-fashioned value for a hectic, fast-paced, breakneck speed of life which has slowly disintegrated our fervor and passion while simultaneously elevating our blood pressure. Packed within each 24-hour time span is an unsustainable number of tasks we've placed upon ourselves, as well as demands we've allowed others to deem urgent enough to place upon us as well. And based on our fatigue and frustration, we'd give anything to offload the burden. But rest doesn't seem like a viable option anymore. Have we forever passed up any kind of reality that dares to include rest as part of a typical day, or week, or month, or even year? When Jesus sent his disciples off on a specific ministry assignment in Matthew 6, 7-11, through 11, he didn't shield them from the fact that their journey would not be particularly easy. People will refuse to listen to them, much less give them hospitality. Any cause for excitement would be counterbalanced by any number of legitimate reasons for quitting and discouragement. They would be empowered to preach, heal, and spread the news of the kingdom, yes, but would also be exhausted on every front, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And even after finally coming back home from their tiring journey— people would still be coming and going enough that the disciples did not even have time to eat. So as their first order of business upon returning, Jesus greeted them with clear instructions. Come, rest a while. It wasn't a request. It wasn't a friendly suggestion. It was Jesus' command. Here's what you're going to do, guys. Then They'd been through a lot. And much more remain to be done. But for now, rest. Come and rest. At least for a little while. Do you ever feel guilty for taking time away to regroup and recharge? Are you saddled with a sense of wasted opportunity if every space on your calendar is not filled? Are you afraid your world would stop turning if you disengaged for even a few moments? Are you concerned about losing your competitive advantage if you're not converting every moment into maximum achievement and efficiency? Then hear the voice of your Savior welcoming you into a place where grace flows, where the Spirit refuels, and where mercy fixes what's been strained and stressed by the accumulation of life's pressures. This is a space where priorities and relationships that have been pushed out of alignment and are in need of repair, get patched up and recalibrated. Quiet time is not an excuse for the lazy, but a wise investment for the diligent. It is for those who are committed to being active servants and followers of Jesus Christ, instead of slaves to the tyranny of urgent busyness and activity. By prioritizing rest for ourselves and for those we love, we may just rediscover the joy we thought we had lost forever. Here's some words from Austin Kleon's book, Steal Like an Artist. Save your thefts for later. Carry a notebook and a pen with you wherever you go. Get used to pulling it out, jotting down your thoughts and observations. Copy your favorite passages out of books. Record overheard conversations. Doodle when you're on the phone. 
Go to whatever lengths necessary to make sure you always have paper on you. Artist David Hockney had all the inside pockets of his suit jackets tailored to fit a sketchbook. The musician author Russell liked to wear shirts with two front pockets so he could fill them with scraps of score sheets. Keep a swipe file. It's just what it, like, what it sounds like, a file to keep track of the stuff you've swiped from others. It can be digital or analog. It doesn't matter what form it takes as long as it works. You can keep a scrapbook and cut and paste things into it. Or you can just take pictures of things with your camera phone. See something worth stealing? Put it in the swipe file. Need a little inspiration? Open up the swipe file. Newspaper reporters call this a morgue file. I like that name even better. Your morgue file is where you keep the dead things that you'll later reanimate in your work. Mark Twain says, It's better to take what does not belong to you than to let it lie around neglected. Don't wait until you know who you are to get started. When you make things, you know yourself. If I'd waited to know who I was or what I was about before I started being creative, well, I'd still be sitting around trying to figure myself out instead of making things. In my experience, it's in the act of making things and doing our work that we figure out who we are. You're ready. Start making stuff. You might be scared to start. That's natural. There's this very real thing that runs rampant in educated people. It's called imposter syndrome. The clinical definition is a psychological phenomenon in which people are unable to internalize their accomplishments. It means that you feel like a phony, like you're just winging it, like you really don't have any idea what you're doing. Guess what? None of us do. Ask anybody doing truly creative work, and they'll tell you the truth. They don't know where the good stuff comes from. They just show up and do their thing every day. Fake it till you make it. Have you ever heard of dramaturgy? It's a, fashion, a fancy term for something William Shakespeare spelled out in his play, As You Like It, about 400 years ago. Quote, all the world's a stage. All the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their ex- entrances, and one man in, his, in this time plays many parts. Another way to say this? Fake it till you make it. I love the phrase. There are two ways to read it. Number one, pretend to be something you're not until you are. Fake it until you're successful, until everybody sees the way you want them to, or... Number two, pretend to be making something until you actually make something. I love both readings. You have to dress for the job you want, not the job you have. You have to start doing the work you want to be doing. I also love the book Just Kids by the musician Patti Smith. It's a story of how two friends who wanted to be artists moved to New York. You know how they learned to be artists? They pretended to be artists. In my favorite scene, from which the book gets its title, Patti Smith and her friends, the photographer uh, Robert Mapplethorpe, dress up in all their bohemian gypsy gear and go to Washington Park Square, Washington Square Park, where everybody's hanging out. Well, this old touristy couple is gawking at them. The wife says to her husband, "Oh, take their picture. I, th- I think they're artists. Oh, go on." The husband disagrees. They're just kids. The point is, all the world's a stage. Creative work is a kind of theater. The stage is your studio, your desk, or your workstation. The costume is your outfit, your painting pants, your business suit, or that funny hat that helps you think. The props are your materials, your tools, and your medium. The script is just plain old time, an hour here, an hour there, just time measured out for things to happen. Fake it till you make it.
Here's an excerpt from my book, Your Creative Peace. Find and deepen your creative voice while connecting with God. My friend, who lives in another state, and I worked together before. We both were yoga certified. In fact, during that experience when we were getting our certification, we emailed on a daily basis for almost three months and accumulated about 100 pages worth of emails preparing for our certification. So we knew of each other's writing style, which would come in handy here in this new experience of writing a book together. And we also knew how to stay connected through the email process since we lived miles apart and in two different time zones. We continued to have conversations about the book idea. My friend sent the storyline for the drawings, and I was incredibly excited. Initially, my job was to illustrate some coloring pages, which I quickly knocked out and sent to her. This was great, I thought. I was exhilarated. Until she came back to me and asked to consider illustrating the whole book. Okay, there's a few problems that immediately came to my mind. Number one, I am not an illustrator. Number two, I do not draw people's bodies very well. Number three, I can't do it. As I looked through the manuscript she emailed to me, I saw that there were 14 yoga poses that she wanted me to tackle. I was overwhelmed, afraid, intrigued, excited. So the next step for me in saying yes to this challenge was to declutter. You know what I mean, all those little diversions and feel-good things we do to pass the time. And to be honest, some things I was happily saying yes, woohoo, for finally having a reason to let them go. I took a long look at the busy things, the things that I was working at mechanically, whether it be in my business space or in my friendships that I needed to realign with the things I felt like God was calling me into. At this point, my husband was still deployed with the military and would not be home for another six months. And I still had my little one at home, who was five at the time, but missed the cutoff date for kindergarten. So time needed to be very structured. When I woke up the next day, I could feel the ingredients coming together for a recipe of a different kind of day. I had a new project that I was working on with my dear friend, burning vibrantly in front of me, but also challenging me to stretch and face my feelings of terror. But here I was with an open heart and an open schedule. And I was so very pleased by the results I would later see. I turned on my iPod and I let the music shuffle through some beautiful music. J.J. Heller, Seven Day Slumber, James Morrison, Francesca Bonicelli. And I got into the midst of what I felt like a worship space, a zone. And I could see how things were suddenly beginning to come together. But I could also feel God whispering, yes, keep going. Don't be afraid. Thanks so much for stopping by. You can find this book and everything about me over on my Instagram account under at Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for life. Thanks so much for stopping by.